So we want to, this morning, focus on those who are going to be coming into membership and fellowship with us. They've been here in fellowship with us. And this morning, they're taking that next step where they commit to becoming a member of the church. And so they already know what all of that is about. But I want all of us to get together today to understand what that fellowship truly means to us. The fellowship of the body of Christ. And so we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 4, verses 42 to 47 this morning and I know I preached from this a while back probably a year or so ago and it I'm not going to preach the same message but a little bit of a different turn here so Acts chapter 4 verses 42 to 47 and I'm just going to highlight some things out of um, Ephesians 3 and then also 1 Corinthians 12 they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. One of the key phrases we see in this is that they were together. They were, had everything in common. And when, Jesus, when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost... It was just a natural outflow of that experience in Acts chapter 2 that the disciples found new believers to be a part of the body of Christ during that time. And so there wasn't anyone, nowhere in the scripture previous to this section of scripture do we find where they said, now you need to go and practice fellowship. It's not there. So they just, the Holy Spirit helped them to bring together the unity of the body of Christ and to exercise that unity in faith, believing that they were all one body. They were together. And so it was something that they just did because the Holy Spirit was in the midst of them. And it should be something that we, as a congregation, as a, the church, do. We desire. It's a natural outflow of the Holy Spirit ministering to each one of us to be able to uh, have that desire to come together often and to often celebrate and, and have fellowship together. And that fellowship looks at different in different ways. And so when... We come together. Fellowship isn't always potluck dinners. Right? I mean, sometimes we think we're going to have fellowship together and that's what we do. We have, a, we have, you know, a dinner or a meal we share together. But when the early disciples, the early church came together, they did not just hold a potluck dinner. They did more than that. And we do more than that too. We just probably don't realize that it's fellowship when we're together. And so what do we do? When we are together, we are together so that we can accomplish the purpose and the will of God in the church. And the evidence of that comes out in praying together. We do that. Worshiping together. Like we're here, gathered here this morning. We're worshiping together. It also is serving together. And we've done that. We've, not only have we served together in this, this body of believers, has served, come together and served together, but we also serve together with other fellow believers within our community. When we are together at our community events. We're serving and working together 
for the common good of what? The community of believers. And so God, he wants us to do that. He desires that for us. And so he places, the Holy Spirit places that desire within us to have that desire together to be together. We like one another, don't you? I hope so. Because I don't know what we would be doing here if we didn't like each other. Tolerating each other, maybe. You probably tolerate me more than, more than you put out you do. But you're commanded anyway to love me. So, you know, you like it or not. You don't have to like everything, but you have to, you're commanded to love. Just as I'm commanded to love. Um, but I like you all, too. And I love you all, too. So together, we were believers together. And I, I look at this Acts chapter 4 scripture and I think about what they did together is the same things that we do together. They, they had everything in common. They prayed together. They gave to one another in need together. They um, met together in, in the church setting. They broke bread together. They had communion together. Um, and they also broke bread in their homes together. That means they actually had dinners together. They might not have had dinners in a common uh, place, but they, had, they ate meals together. They shared everything in common. And look at what happened when they did that. It says, The Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And today the Lord is adding to the number, they, the, those who are in member, coming into membership today have already been saved and they testified to that when we met together and went through the membership class. But they did, they've gone beyond that and now they're coming as a part of the body of Christ, the believers together among us. So what is fellowship? What is God's purpose for the church? One person in and of themselves cannot fulfill every part of the ministry of the church. That's why in, when, in Paul's writings in Ephesians and, and 1 Corinthians, he talks about the gifts that are given to believers. He says that the, it's for the, in Ephesians chapter 3, it's for the common good um, so that... The body may be built up in unity. See, that's the key. The body is built in unity as we all together use our gifts for the common purpose of building God's kingdom. And then in 1 Corinthians, he's, Paul says it's for the common good, again. And God combined or gave honor so that there would be no division. And when there's no division, what, what's the opposite of that? Unity. And so God designed all of us to have gifts that we bring together to make the church, his church, what he desires and designed it to be so that we could be built up in unity and maturity together. There was a movie back in 1926 called <laughs> Vote Guest. And in this movie, uh, we kind of see some, the picture of some churches and how they function and how we're not supposed to function. In this movie, the Arabs were attacking a foreign legion outpost and four legionnaires were this, uh, left alive in the post. But they wanted the enemy to think that they had a lot of strength. And so they went around to every turret where they were in the in their um, fortress, and they propped up all the dead bodies with their guns. And then these four went around shooting the guns so that no one outside would think that there were that many dead people inside. What does that tell us about the church? What do we learn about that? That God didn't raise up just one person or four people to do all the work. He raised up every one of us to have gifts and graces that we can give to the church. And so we use them to honor God in the church. 
You see, it's not about us hiring professional people to do all the work. Because God, that would take away from what the gifts he wants you to use in the ministry of the church. He doesn't want us to have people propped up, in other words, and go and do, try and do everything. There's no way that one person can do what all of us can do together and accomplish the perfect will of God for our church. So it takes every one of us. And so how do we practice this fellowship then? Well, we have to take an active role. And I know that when I look out at all of you, you're taking an active role. You're filling your place that God has for you in different ways. So using your spiritual gifts, using what God has given you and gifted you with, you use that back to honor him and, and to please him. And we, as a body of Christ, benefit from the way that you use your gifts. We, you, you use your talents. You know, some people have, have talents in one area um, that others don't. You've heard me say before, I do not, music is not my thing. You wouldn't want me to play. I even joked with Sarah, she could play the right and I'd play the left. And, and No, opposite way. That would even be more of a disaster, probably. Uh, but it's not my talent, where it is someone else's talent, you see. So we have to use what we have to honor and glorify God within the body of Christ. Um, we, then we serve. Every one of us has a gift of serving. Because it's, when we serve, it's the way we use the gift that God's given us. And so if you say, I can't serve, my answer is, you're not reading the word and understanding what God is saying to us because we all can serve. We all do serve. The way that we serve may be different, but it's the service is using the gifts that God has given us. And so in a, with our new members, we have, I've asked them to do the, the uh, spiritual gifts and they, so some of them know what they are, and they're beginning to employ those spiritual gifts in using them for God's honor and glory among the body of Christ here in Hawthorne Church. And so it's a delight today to, isn't it always fun when you take in members and you see the body of Christ just enlarge that much more? And I know that God is going to add even more to the body of Christ here in Hawthorne.